When you fall, you say I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and get up and keep going and you're going to see less and less because it is not about you. It is only about what Jesus did, only about what he did and your faith in it. And, and the fact that we're called to be hated under glory. That's what we're called to do. And you know what? We've been graced to do it. Jesus suffered horribly for us. He was made that for us. And he is rejoicing and, and advocating for us right now and has never left. Because if you're in Christ, it don't belong to you. Their evil prophecies don't belong to you. Their evil prognostication don't belong to you. Their desolation, it doesn't belong to you. It's not for you. Their dark women, it's not for you. 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 Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me again today on Preach Your Voice Not an Echo Ministry. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Apostle Chantro Davis, and I am on day four of my marathon ministry message recordings. And this is message number two. I'm going to see how many of the Lord is going to bless me and enable me to do today. I'm going to get right into this message. I pray you have, have your hearts tuned in. You have prepared your soul to receive this engrafted word that is able to save your soul. You are ready to receive this word that will give the uh, entrance of light to light up the things that are contrary in your spirit because this ministry seeks to have you bring forth fruit and for that fruit to remain and that you will grow thereby into what the Lord has called you into, that you will be blessed and edified by this ministry as well as corrected. This is the part that many people can't sit under this ministry, for the Lord has given me an eye of deliverance, and deliverance is not just casting out devils, because some of them devils that are hiding in your flesh will leave just by the correcting of your behavior, just by the acknowledging of your wrong, just by the acknowledging of where you lack understanding. The enemy can hide in the darkness. What does darkness mean? If the Lord says the word and truth makes manifest in, uh, darkness, it makes manifest what you don't know. So the entrance of this world will light up what's in you that you don't know in you. The, the entrance of this world will light up places you did not know you were wrong. The entrance of this world will light up what's in keeping you from growing or moving to the next point of your spiritual walk. We can't only want to hear you got a blessing coming tomorrow. Because you will hear that all the way till you die and never have reached and uh, received anything the Lord would have you to receive. The enemy gets so many people hurt. Let me tell you how slick the enemy is. He will first try you with poverty, with lack, with all that stuff. And some of you will push through because you realize it's a fight. Some he could just give a little something and you think, I must be blessed. You live in a tall cold sin going your own way and because you bought that house, the Lord blessed you. No, sir. The enemy gave you, or no ma'am, he gave you something to cause you to stop seeking the good, acceptable, perfect will of the Lord. The enemy has learned to keep many Christians silenced by giving them a little something. Don't be one of those. Or something you lost that hurt you, or someone you lost that hurt you. When the enemy saw you pressing through, he sent them back. Mm -hmm. Catch that too. The interest of word gives light. And it makes manifest what is dark. Because in him there is no darkness. So he's picking out and pulling out the weeds and the rocks and the contaminants. And burning up the parasites that are hiding in the spirit and attached to you. You must love to learn. That's what he said. They receive not, they receive not the love of the truth. That's not just to receive the love of God who is truth. But love to hear the truth, whatever that may be. He's preparing you for himself. This is what people don't understand. When the Lord says the word through me and it, it, it stuck you, he's preparing you for himself. And either you say no, and you think it's harming me, but it's harming you. Because he's preparing you for something he know coming down the line. He's preparing you for a season he know coming so that you won't fake. He's preparing you for a work that he has that you may reach others. And you must choose to yield or not. That is moment to moment, day by day. Some of you have to learn. I told you, only a certain matter of time, he will allow you to eat from another's fruit. You are partaking of the fruit that is in me. Many will, for a while, ride on the grace of another. And don't you understand, you will still get benefits of this, even as you grow into your own. 
When you sow into ministries that have blessed you, you start to partake of what they, everything they had to fight and go through, you, you get moved up without having to fight the stuff they had to fight. This is why, and I'm not to say that I have to inject this because this matters. When you sow into a ministry that has fed you and grown you in the spirit, and the Lord and brought them through, that's why they're operating in the anointing they're operating in, because you, this is why the people cannot overlook the physical principle of sowing seed. Because all the stuff they had to fight to get there, you can just partner with them and sow seed and just receive of the work that they had. Without having to fight what they had to fight, you start to benefit from their anointing. This is a principle. But the many get, this is what the enemy getting people in their mind. They are not reaping the harvest of the anointing that they just sat under for all that time. Why would you do that? As a matter of fact, you ain't even got to be the set on it. If you saw somebody you know got one real good and it's true, you could, he said so besides all waters. <laughs> you can protect that too. But more importantly, the ones you just sat under, okay? Let me back to what I was saying. That he will allow you to ride on the grace of another as you grow. I'm talking about getting your own food. And eat from day tree for a while. That's why I said, if you've been sitting under this many two, three, four, five years, I'm not even expecting some service under you. I'm going to put you to work. If that's what the Lord says. And not everybody is called to walk with you in that way. But I'm going to expect you to be the Because if you don't listen to all the messages that I loaded up, and you listen to them things over and over again, ain't no way some of that stuff going to be able to still hide in you. The anointing going to find that stuff and just cut it out like a stick, and then sew you up. The word going to stick you, then sew you up. Okay? You have to get your own food. You have to begin to be out of your belly. Your belly flows rivers of living water. You send forth your river, and whether so your river goes, there will be a great multitude of fish where that river goes, and there will be healing where you send your rivers. That's where you send your river. And so now this is the season. Many of them have to stay with me alone. That's why he moved me off you too. This is going to be a personal thing. It's time for you to grow and move into the anointing that's been upon you in the world you've gone. You have to learn to prophesy. Prophesy is to tell forth, not just to foretell. You can just read the scripture and see what the scripture says and get creative with your words as you want to get based on that scripture. Start to speak to the land, speak to the water, speak to somebody's personality. Divide that soul from the spirit. When you see somebody with a ugly attitude and a nasty attitude, they, 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 you just bring up the fact of the word of God that they are the, he is the father of spirits. But the Holy Spirit is dividing the son to even the soul from the spirit. That nasty attitude is soul. Divide that off. Command it off that spirit. And prophesy into people's life. You have to speak it. Okay? You have to get to where you offer someone else's tree and grace and on your own. So the name of this message is the unction. There's an answer in your waters. And this is a kingdom can do it message. The message is called the unction. There's an answer in your waters. Your waters. Especially if you've been sitting under this ministry because it's full of the fire. Your belly been bubbling, purifying your waters. Because if you've been reading the word, that's your water. The wellspring of wisdom that's in you, and it says a man of understanding knows how to draw it out. Now it's time for you to draw out of your will. Counsel in a man's heart is as deep waters. But a man, man or woman, man mean person, of understanding knows how to draw it out. It's time for you to know how to draw out the counsel in your heart. You put word all in. The Holy Spirit, if you've been receiving this corrective word, has been bubbling up your belly, stirring up in you. I stir you up and it purifies your waters. Now you have to send forth your water. And this is the unction because the Bible tells us you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. That's why I call it unction. You have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things if you have the Holy Spirit. I, I got so much testimony, I can't wait. He just give me information. I was praying in the Spirit in here the other night, multiple languages. And I don't know why, it probably was the Holy Spirit that caused me to even inquire. And I said, the Holy Spirit, how, how do I say my name in Mandarin? And I began to fluidly pray in the Spirit in Mandarin. I know it's Mandarin because it's one of, the, one of the languages that I got baptized with. I got baptized with the Holy Spirit first and then the gift of tongues came. And Mandarin was one as well as Malaysian. Um, it was a few. Greek. I know I speak Greek and I know I speak Arabic. It has come out, okay? 
Um, yeah, let me get to the message. The message is called the unction. There's an answer in your abilities. Okay? And I'm stirring them up. John, 1 John 2, 19-20. They went out from us because they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would not, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that it might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But you, but you, because you're still here, but you have an auction from the Holy One. And you know all things. We're going to speak that right there. I just want to read the whole scripture. Key it on 20. But you have an unction. From the Holy One, and ye know all things. There's an answer in your waters for somebody. It's somebody waiting on what you have to say from the Lord. It's somebody waiting up on what you will prophesy from the Lord. It's somebody waiting on the encouragement He has for you to give them. It's somebody that is alive for such a time as this to come across your path at the appointed time, which is why you must have your mind made free and clear so that you will be in the right place at the right time before the right people in the right state of being in the right state of mind to deliver the unction and the answer that is in your waters to speak to a city, a nation, a town, a family, a business, and wherever he may send you. Even stand in the mirror and speak to yourself and stir yourself up on your most holy faith. And you do that even praying in the Holy Ghost, okay? That's it. But you. I thought that thing wasn't ticking no more, okay? Definition of unction. We already know. An anointing. Excessive but superficial compliments. Okay, that's, that was the earthly. I, I put the whole definition. Superficial compliments given with uh, with affected charismatic. Where it also means char charismaticness. And character. So we know you have the character of Christ and the charismaticness of Christ and the anointing of Christ, okay? And uh, the Greek meaning is nomination. You have a nomination, an ointment. This is what unction means a confirmation, a salve. And it means I salve. Yeah, I dab your eyes with salve that you may see. That's in the scripture all day. It has an unguent. That means a savor. And it has lip salve. <laughs> yeah, it deals with the mouth, the head, the hands, the feet. I want y'all to catch this. It means nomination. That means you are appointed and anointed. Anointment, ointment, confirmation. That means you even have the word of witness because the spirit bears record of itself. The spirit bears witness unto itself. You have an unction. Therefore, an answer in your watch. Salve can be for the feet, the head, hands, and whatever else. Eye salve that you can see. Unguent is a sweet savor. Some people need some smelling salts. Snap them out of it. They sleep. S smelling salts of the kingdom. <laughs> and lip salve where their mouth decide to be, set, you know, that they can speak right words in due season. And have forcible right words. Dab their mouth and their lips with salve. Their eyes with salve that they can see. You have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. Okay? I salve to see. Okay, let's go down. 1 Corinthians 2 and 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct them? Now, who can instruct the Lord? Who had, he, who had known? That's past tense. Who hath known? That's past tense. That's all the covenant. Who hath known the mind of the Lord? That he may instruct them. They didn't. But we have the mind of Christ. You have an unction. That unction is the anointing, the nomination, the anointing, anointment, the anointment, the confirmation, the sound, the eye sound, the unguent, and the lip sound. From head to toe, you got the oil. You hear that? From head to toe, wherever they need help, head to toe. Inwardly and outwardly, you got the ointment, for you have the unction. There is an answer in your watts. The water of the spirit. You have the knowledge of his will. He sent to get through you. He operates in you to get through the others. You have rivers of wisdom, a flowing brook. You have rivers of provision spiritually and physically. You have an answer to their issues, problems, errors, and lack. There is someone waiting on the answer that is in your belly. Because if you are saved, you are a minister. 
You have to operate and go until he gives you the anointing of a particular, because that anointing, the only why he changes your name and gives you title is because it bears certain functions with it. Until he gets us to the fullness of the statute to where you just do what you're told and you operate in all of them. But that's growth. Abounding grace. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. And God is able to make all grace, able to make and has. He's able to make all grace, that means anything you need to speak to, abound toward you, that you, he makes it abound toward you, for what? So then that you, always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound in every good work for the answers that are in your wants. Sit forth, okay? 2 Corinthians 9, did I put that thing there twice? Girl, yes you did. Y'all know I would have put that thing twice. I thought I put it in two languages. This this wasn't King James. And God was able to make all grace, every effort, this had to be amplified, every effort and earthly blessing come in abundance to you so that you may always under all circumstances, regardless of the need, regardless of the need, I don't care how big, how small, or whether they do it all, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in him, and have the abundance for every good work and charitable act of donation. That means every. He said, no, he said regardless of the need, whether it's a company that needs instructions, or whether it's a household that needs instructions, or whether it's an individual that needs instructions, whether it's a company that needs finances because you are the lender and not the bar, or whether it's the household that needs finances. He said regardless of the size of the need, that you are sufficient minister of the gospel of grace, for you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things, and to know all things is to be one with all things, for all things are ours. And we are Christ, and Christ is God, and all things belong to us, so you can speak to it, for there is an answer in your waters, for you have the unction from the Holy One, and someone is waiting on the answer in your waters, okay? The brightness of your rising, this is what people are going to be drawn to, because you have the waters, as you go bright and bright, you have the flowing river of light from your belly, Isaiah 61 through 5, arise and shine, this is time, arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You hear me? The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So move forth with your unction. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Y'all seeing it now. And gross darkness the people. That's what's happening. But the but 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 the Lord shall rise upon thee. You hear me? Though the darkness is covering this earth, and gross darkness is covering the people, you are looking at it right now. He said, But the Lord shall arise up on thee. This is prophetic. Receive this in your belly and send forth from your belly the waters that you have for others. Okay? And his glory shall be seen upon thee and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. You ain't about to do nothing. You're just going to rise. And the Gentiles are going to come to your light. And the kings of the the kings will come to the brightness of your rising. So the Gentiles are going to be drawn toward your light. The kings, these are the leaders in the high places. They're going to come to thy, the brightness of your rising. Those who are not seen and known now will be. He's going to make your praise in all the earth. That's one of his promises. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see. Then thou shalt see. And flow together. And flow together. And thine heart shall fear. And be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea, that is the nations, the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. You hear me? The abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. And what's unto thee? You are in Christ, what's unto him. So why they are converted unto thee? They are converted unto Christ because he has used you to draw them into himself. For you and your Lord are one. Just like he and his father is one, we and our Lord are one. Okay? The abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, converted unto thee. The forces, which is the wealth of the wicked that is laid up for the just, the forces of the Gentile shall come unto thee. So not only will the nations turn unto you in repentance and be converted, but the wealth of the Gentiles and the forces, which is their power and their power is in their wealth and all that they possess, shall also come unto thee. Receive that word, the name of Jesus Christ, that will be brought to the bright, drawn to the brightness of your rising in Christ Jesus. For you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. There is an answer in your waters because the glory of the Lord shall be shown up on you. 
I've already received this for myself. Now you receive this word for yourself. And you take this scripture and say with your name. Okay? You will rebuild the waste places. This is part of why. Isaiah 61, 1 through 4. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the good tidings to the unto the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim, proclaim liberty to the captive. These people are bound. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Them too. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of the Lord to comfort all the mourn. And that was the Lord. And continuing on is where we picked it up. To anoint, uh, uh, to appoint unto them that morning Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. You're going to give them beauty for the ashes. The oil of joy for the morning. The garment of praise for their heaviness. That they might be called the trees of right. Now that they might be. You are a tree of righteousness. Now you need to bring others into being called the trees of righteousness. The planting, because there's only one planting. The tree just get brought into this forest. The planting is singular. Of the Lord. That he might be glorified. Why? That he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste places and we shall. And they shall rise up the former desolation and we shall. And they shall repair the waste cities. Yes, we shall. And the desolations of many generations. We shall lift up the foundations of many generations and we shall. You know, let me, let me, let me tell you what the... <laughs> I just got to start feeling my spirit when I get stuff like this because I see stuff, y'all. And I got to bring it on down and to call it ghetto, call it what you want. But I got to bring it on down to speak in regular language. He said you will raise up the foundation of many generations. You know how you've been seeing blood lines where everybody was in the ghetto. Everybody was on low income. Low income. Everybody only stayed on this side of town where it was kind of poor shooting up bang bang. But that was the, that was the old foundation. Well, at generation after generation, they, 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 this, this level of living ain't acceptable no more. Everybody was at least hearing up. You will raise up the foundations of many generations. Living lower than what you expected will not be accepted anymore. When many people will accept, well, this is just how it is. Everybody in our family didn't always come. I heard somebody say that at the word, and it broke my heart. And I told that young man, no, sir. He said, I guess I'm going to be dying about 26. He said, everybody and every member of my family died at 26. I said, that's the opposite. I prophesied to him. I didn't even know I was a minister yet. <laughs> but no, raised up the level of that foundation. That's not what the Lord has for you. Okay? Raising the foundation for generations. Well, I was hearing myself, wasn't I? Isaiah 58 and 12. And they that shall be of thee. That means your children. But I want y'all to catch this. And they that shall be of thee. This is not just the children you had. These are people you brought in under your ministry. Who he used to betray. He used you to draw them into Christ. And they that shall be of thee. And what does it mean? When you brought them in, you are in Christ. Those that should be of him. Those that should be of thee. Okay, shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the paths to dwelling. Paths, plural, to dwelling. Restoring the paths. Wisdom to dwell in them. You have to not only restore the paths, you give them the wisdom to dwell and remain in them paths. Wisdom that tells you how, when, how and when to use the knowledge. That's what wisdom is. You can be filled with the knowledge of his will. Why do you think he said, and all wisdom? Be, I pray that you will be filled with the knowledge of his will. You got to have the knowledge of his will. And all wisdom. Because wisdom tells you how and when to use the knowledge. So you pray to be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk, the, why? That you may, may walk word of the Lord unto all Pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. It takes you right back to this, doesn't it? And increasing of the knowledge of God. You feel with the knowledge of his will. That means knowing his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding, it tells you how and when to use the knowledge he gave you and how and when to yield and act on the knowledge of the Lord. Okay? Rivers from your belly. John 7 and uh, 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. There is an answer in your waters. There's an answer in your waters, beloved. Rivers of healing. It's time. Arise and shine for your light has come. Ezekiel 47, 8 through 9. I'm prophesying this word as this is prophesying. Y'all don't understand it ain't about telling you what's about to come to pass, even though he showed me that. This is prophesying. You must receive this word I just gave. Ezekiel 47, 8 through 9. 
Then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country. They're going to go everywhere. And down into the desert. These waters. You, where, you, where are you sending your river? I'm sending my river to the four corners. Okay? And go down into the desert. And go into the sea. The sea is the nation. Which being brought forth into the sea. The water shall be healed. The nation shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth. Everything that liveth. Which moveth. Whithersoever the river shall go. Come. Shall kneel. Wherever you send your rivers. That place. That person. That thing. Shall kneel. Okay. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish. Those are people. Because these waters shall come thither. It's going to be a multitude of people because your water, your waters came thither, thither that your waters with there. For they shall be healed and everything shall live. Everything shall live. Everything shall live. Whether soever your river go, wherever the river cometh, the river of living water that is flowing from your belly. For you have the unction. There's an answer in your waters. And it's time for you to rise up and speak. Prophesy. It ain't how eloquent your words. You speak the word of God. Use your creativity based on the scripture. And speak to. Okay? Keep on your garments of praise and your robes of righteousness. Never forget to who you are. How you acted that day don't change the fact that you're righteous. You might not have pleased him that day, but you're still righteous. And you have to learn to get back up without condemnation, repent in your heart, and say, more grace, Lord. And, 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 and that's it. Don't be pondering on it two days later, bringing it back up. That's the devil. Because you must remain in your righteous stand and knowing that nothing will move you out of it. Nothing takes you from his hand. But if the enemy can get you to even think, you will cause this not to, not to be effective in your life. But we can't allow that. I, Isaiah 61 and 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord my uh, the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he had clothed me with the garments of salvation. He had covered me with the robe of righteousness. You are covered. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and a bride adorneth herself with jewels, you are covered in the vastness of the Lord. Your projection and authority, your protection and authority, your three robes. You got the robe of righteousness, you have the garment of salvation, and the praise, but you have to understand the tunic of authority. The man in this earth has been given the authority of heaven. Okay? You put on the whole arm of God as you go forth in this because the enemy ain't going to like the deliverance of masses. But he ain't got no choice. You give him no choice. Ephesians 6, 14 through 20. Stand therefore, always stand, having your Lord's girl with the gospel of truth, having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, don't forget the shield of faith. Well with you quit every fiery dart of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And this is where people usually stop. Praying with all supplication. That's another one. As a pray, uh, a praying always, all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Praying always, all supplication in the spirit. This is our support. Okay? Then watching thereunto. Watch. You got to sit up sometime. With all perseverance, no matter what you run into, get back up. And supplication for all sake. Then you got to pray for other people. This is also part of your armor. And if you're not doing this, you got to open it. Because why? Those who water shall be watered. When you start praying for other saints, you get filled. You get strengthened. When you start praying for healing to somebody else, you get it. When you start praying for somebody else's marriage, yours is blessed. When you start praying for somebody's deliverance and clear mind and mouth, your mouth get better. Okay? And then this part. Many forget. You sit and eat from this ministry, verse 19. And for me. You pray for me. You pray who you eat, who you eating from. You pray and supplicate from them that they mouth always remain and be full of the spirit to feed you. That is part of your armor too. And for me that all utterance may be given unto me. That I may open my mouth as boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Because he's showing me many mysteries. But pray that I always will speak these mysteries to you. Okay? This is what God. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein 
that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. That my mouth is bold as the Lord that made it even unto this day. That should be your prayer for me. And that is the final part of your armor. This is where people forget to do it. You cannot leave no opening in your armor. Because when you get to go on uh, forth with this man's deliverance, the Lord just showed me. You have an unction from the Holy One. And you know all things. Beloved, this message is called again. The unction, and it is prophetic, and I have prophesied it over you, and you must receive it unto yourself. For this word be for those with the capacity to receive it. What did I tell you what the capacity means? Those who have made room to be lifted up, made room to be spoken into, made room to be filled with and quickened in their spirit, made room to receive this word, and then you must receive it and declare it yourself. For I have prophesied this word. You have an unction, and you know all things. So this message again, beloved, is the unction. There is an answer in your wants. Receive it, decree it, and develop in it. Start speaking to everything and everything. You better speak to your plants, speak to the weather, speak to the wind, speak into people's life. There is an answer in your belly. Ask the Lord to lead you every day. Declare the very scripture, the Lord, I commit my thoughts unto you, and my thank you that my ways are established. I commit my ways unto you, and I thank you that you bring forth my righteousness as the light, and my judgment as the noonday. Begin to speak to everything contrary to the Spirit, and command all material, physical and material matters, to, and command them to come into alignment with righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost. Cause it to submit. To all things that are Christ. Beloved, receive this word. You have the capacity to receive it. You receive it and begin to operate it in the name of Jesus. Grace be with you, beloved. And I love you all. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me today. I am Apostle Chantro Davis, and this is Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo Ministry. Where is Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo Ministry? Many of you have asked. I've seen you post on old comments. Some of you have inboxed me. Well, as expected, our channel was removed from YouTube. But this is to be expected when you speak truth to power, when you call sin, sin, and a lie, a lie, when you call out the defamation that they have planned. Yeah, there were warnings, but I ought to obey God, and I did. So what did the Lord have to say about this? On the very day he spoke to me, he said, I have removed you from the atmosphere. This had double meaning. He had removed me out of the atmosphere that is the earth for me to speak down from the spiritual world and to speak down into the earth realm. Many of you who are spiritual know this, what this means. But it also meant he had removed me from the atmosphere that is YouTube, the atmosphere that is wickedness, the atmosphere that is witchcraft, the atmosphere that is the atmosphere of oppression, and also the atmosphere that is after the workings of Satan. He also let me know that many will esteem you stricken of the Lord. You will decree, be decreed a deceiver, though you are yet true. Are you willing to let the world perceive you how they will to please your God? Well, I said yes. And it will always be yes. This is a great divide. As many of you have followed me for some time, know I have told you this is a great divide. This is a dividing line. I hope that you are on the right side of the Red Sea when it closes. Will you remain with your God or will you go with popularity? The Lord has given me wisdom to understand that this divide will not only be from platforms, but in homes. This was prophesied in the word of God itself when he said the foes, your foes will be those of your own house. We are watching this manifest for we know the Lord is yet true, though every man be a liar. This is a time of tribulations. What does that mean? It is a narrowing of your movement, a narrowing of your speech, a narrowing of the way you would flow in the spirit. For your very existence opposes this world. You are in a hostile environment because you belong to the king. There will be no more passive Christianity or casual Christians who will become casualties. You ought to obey the Lord your God. So where is Preach Bill Voice Not an Echo, you say? You can find me on Gab. You can find me on Gitter. We are also on Rumble. And as always, we have a blog. And no doubt, Preach Bill Voice Not an Echo has a ministry website at preachbvne.webs.com. Understand, brothers and sisters, 
that we are sent into the world that is a fire. But lo, the Lord is in the fire with us and we shall not be consumed. So gird your loins, trust in the Lord your God and move forward in the truth, forward in the word, forward in the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. In doing this, the Lord will save many in and through you. So those of you who have not subscribed to our website, our Rumble, our Gab, and our Gitter, please do so. Trust me, you do not want to miss the words of God that he has spoken. For I have many mighty messages to deliver, and I want you to be in. I want you to be in the right place at the right time before the right people in the right state of being and in the right state of mind. Be one of those who will move forth in faith and in fierceness. Being declared deceiver though you are yet true. But let it be by pureness of spirit and by unfeigned love that anyone who speaks against you will be found and shown to be in the wrong. So trust in the Lord your God, for we are fighting the good fight of faith. And as I've said before, this is a fixed fight. We win, for we are speaking forth from the position of victory. So move forth knowing that though they may war against you, they will not prevail. Thank you to all of you who sent prayers, who continue to send your support, who, who thought well of me rather than ill. The Lord has seen your goodwill toward me, and you will be blessed accordingly. Thank you. Again, this is Preach Bill of What's Not the Echo Ministry, and I'm Apostle Chantrell Davis, signing off. Grace be with you, and I love you all. Join Preach Be A Voice, Not An Echo for Bible study and ministry teachings live on Zoom. Reserve your spot today and register now. It's not motivational speaking, but it is word-based teaching. Did you know that when you hit thumbs up, you enable more to be fed by the very message that just fed you? So share the spiritual meal, feed others, work a righteous work, work at evangelism by working the thumb. Thumbs up, feed more. Thumbs up, feed more. So into the good ground of preach be a voice not an echo yet only as you have purposed in your heart for God loves a cheerful giver the truth the tr of the word of God word of God first Corinthians 9 11 reads if we have sown into your spiritual things is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things give only with purpose and cheer for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account we thank you for all of your support seed of your time seed of your prayers and the purpose seed of your gifts to give visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preach bvne at yahoo.com to listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace be with you. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.